spoke about um, your own reflections on, on the day and how this day has unfolded and the fact that the life of, of a man has been so, you know, tragically taken and so viciously taken away from him. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, good evening to the viewers and thank you for having us. I think, you know, uh, m my reflections are not new and I think um, they, it's sort of a, a reputation of the state's attitude um, towards protests, right? Um, South African police have been, you know, in, in multiple occasions are found to be very um, heavy handed. Um, they've been found to use um, excessive uh, force and inappropriate force um, against uh, protesters. Now, we need to remember that um, we have the regulations of the Gatherings Act, which is the principal legislation that governs protests or gatherings in South Africa, or rather a legislation which regulates um, Section 17 of the Constitution. Now, the preamble of that legislation tells us that where there's a protest, the state has a duty to protect the protesters and the society at large. Now, firing rubber bullets, randomly just firing rubber bullets and tear gas canisters, that cannot be said to be a protection of protesters and the surrounding society. Now, what this uh, preamble also requires is that there must be constant, uh, you know, engagements between protesters and, and, and law enforcement officials. Now, there's also uh, the standing orders of the police, which would tell you that when a rubber bullet is being fired, immediately when it's being projected from a gun, the first contact it comes with, it must not be human flesh because it can cause death if that is the first contact. So a rubber bullet must actually ricochet against another object, probably just hit the, street, hit the ground before it can come into contact, uh, you know, with, um, with uh, uh, human flesh. Yeah, so really, um, you know, the, I, don't, I don't think at this moment we can really talk about the right uh, to freedom of assembly and, you know, a, a constitutionally guaranteed right where every time people exercise their constitutional uh, right, we see, you know, uh, police brutality and, and, and it, it really, really doesn't, uh, you know, make uh, much sense in a democratic society. So I must say that, you know, my reflection is rather not new. I guess, you know, we, we, we saw this in Marikana, we saw this with Andri Statani, and we've seen it with a number of, uh, you know, protesters across the country where police brutality is really rife. Stanley, you, you make a, an important point in that we've been here before in so many different ways and so many scenarios. Why does it keep happening? Because one certainly gets the sense that there isn't enough consequence management. There, it, there aren't repercussions for this kind of behavior. And that is why we continue to see it. Yeah, no, really. I think you also made a very great point that there isn't really uh, much consequences on the side of, you know, uh, law enforcement officials. Um, you know, I think, number one, um, we need to ask ourselves what happened uh, to those uh, officers who massacred the uh, uh, protesting minors in Marikana. Uh, the police officer who killed uh, Andri Statani during a service delivery protest is still serving in the uh, uh, police services. And I mean, you, you know, this goes to a lack of, th there's no accountability at all. Um, you know, if the, and, and, and also this uh, lack of accountability, it exacerbates the way in which our law enforcement respond to protests. Um, and until we have accountability, I don't think we will uh, see any true change when it comes uh, to the constitutional right to protest. And, you know, the ironic part is that um, what the youth is doing today in taking to the streets and uh, protesting, this is what we learned from our, uh, you know, from the ruling party. This is the mechanism that they used against the apartheid government. You know, there was a statement that was made by Mandela during one of the days in the Rivonia trial to say, you know what, we will protest. We will stand here until the apartheid government says, gentlemen, we cannot have this state of affairs continue. Can we sit down and talk? Now, this is the purpose of a protest. The purpose of a protest is to force communication, is to say we cannot pretend as if things are normal. We cannot have business as usual. While South Africa remains the most unequal country in the world, where we see most uh, black people, you know, running to the streets for service delivery, where we see most black um, young people who want to enter education, who want to participate 
in, in the economy, being told that you cannot receive education because you cannot afford to pay. And I, I think, you know, another important thing, we need to reiterate the fact that a protest is not um, a fight against an institution. It is not a fight against government. A protest is a method of saying, we on the ground, this is the will of the people. Your policies should be aligned with the will of the people. I mean, this is this is what the students are promised. This is what people are promised. De year in, year out, when we see political manif manifestos, vote for jobs, vote for service delivery, vote for access to education. This is they are just following up on a, on, on, on a promise. And because we have a government that doesn't like accountability, every time when people try to hold it accountable, especially through protests, then they unleash you know, uh, law enforcement just to, to, to come and bulldoze on peaceful protesters. And we end up with situations where bystanders or even people who are not even part of the protest uh, lose their lives uh, you know, in, the, in, in the equation. And I can tell you, I doubt that there will be any form of accountability because we have the, the IPID, which is the institution that is um, supposedly uh, um, you, you know, uh, entrusted with investigating wrongdoings by the police. We know how premature that institution dismisses cases. We know how they do not investigate matters. So really, the level of accountability exacerbates the situation in which we are in. Mm. One of the issues, Stanley, is that you take the student protest that we've seen today and you compare it with many other protests across the country, some of which will never get coverage. And the one thing that you can see is that consistently we are seeing people die in protest and it's almost as if it's become, it's something that we must expect, that it's become so normalized as part of, of our society that police feel that the only way to re respond to protest is by firing stun grenades, by shooting at people, in fact, with the intention to harm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that does not solve the problem. And I think, um, you know, we, we've, we've, become, we've become a state that more often we question why are people blocking the road? We need to go back and question what led to the students being there. We need to go back and question why, what is it that they want? Were they ever promised this? And if you look at everything that people protest for, people, you, you know, a protest is not a party. You just don't dress up and decide that you are going to go to a protest. It is, it is a matter of human rights. It is a matter of building a better society for everyone. So we need to start questioning what, what should have been done for students not to be there. And I mean, if I can, if I can just jump off course just a little, you know, right now we are busy, uh, you know, uh, on daily basis witnessing and watching the state capture where we see billions and billions of rents being siphoned. We just see corruption just taking away billions and billions of rents. Now, you want to come back to the youth of today that is well conscientized, and you tell them that the government does not have money while they read every day on the news. I mean, corruption has become, you know, it's so deeply rooted into the fabric of the society that nothing can clean it out. Now, you want to come and tell, you know, protesters that the reason why you do not have uh, access to service delivery, the reason why you do not have, uh, you know, a, a running water is because we do not have money. Then the same person that you told tomorrow reads a newspaper about office mis or of mismanagement mm -hmm. and, you know, um, billions and billions of money, just they just went somewhere. No project to a bill. We don't see anything that's happening. So really, I think we, we, we need I think uh, we need to change our attitude. And when I say we, the government needs to change its attitude. The constitutional right to protest is a constitutionally guaranteed right. And this right is there for a reason. It's there to hold government accountable. Sure. And when accountability comes, shooting, pepper spraying, arbitrarily arresting and incriminating students will never they will never, you know, it will never heal uh, the issues. Because right. year in, year out, we see this happen, you know. All right, Stanley, let's leave it there for tonight. Right to protest, Stanley Malimaja. Thanks for your time on News at Prime.